It is such a joy to be with you today. I want to start by extending my gratitude to you, for, to this community, to Reverend Shannon, for allowing me to share my heart with you today. Actually, this talk was inspired by Reverend Shannon. You know, for years, I have, whenever somebody has done something kind for her or for this community that she absolutely adores, I've heard her say, I'm beyond grateful. I'm beyond grateful. Have you heard Reverend Shannon say that? And I've thought, what does that mean? And instead of just asking her like a normal person would do, I, in a totally non-weird way, I watched her to see what that meant. And over the years, I've, as I've come to understand her heart and that she means everything she says, that when she says, I'm beyond grateful, I discovered something as I paid attention. We're all familiar with that feeling of gratitude. If I asked you in this moment to think of one thing you're grateful for, you could do that. Do that. Think for a minute. What's one person that you're grateful for? What's in one experience in your life that brings you joy? Yeah. And it, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> if you hold that thing in mind for just a moment, you start to feel something in your body. For me, it happens here, and it's like an opening. It's an expansion. It's almost a warmth, right? But it feels like something is happening to me. And in that moment, it brings a peace that feels like joy. Maybe it's a joy that feels like peace. And so I started to wonder, well, what's beyond that feeling? You know, what's that next thing underneath it? And it hit me. It's awe. It's wonder. The noun wonder comes from the German word Wudron, which means marvelous thing, miracle, object of astonishment. The verb to wonder has a similar root, but the meaning is to admire, to make wonderful, to magnify. That feeling of wonder when someone, uh, when, when someone feels that when we're actually touched by something, that feeling of wonder actually magnifies that thing. It magnifies the experience of that thing. When Reverend Shannon says she is beyond grateful for something, she's taking that time to feel the gratitude, and that is magnifying the experience with a felt sense of wonder. And so we're moving into Thanksgiving week. I realize in this country that Thanksgiving is fraught with social justice issues. So I've done some research, and I found an absolutely incredible resource by the Center for Racial Justice in Education, and it's called A Racial Justice Guide to Thanksgiving. For those of you online, the link is on your screen and also in the chat box. It's a Center for Racial Justice and Education. On this page, there are lessons for educators and families and everyone, lessons for all of us about how we uplift the contributions and the perspective of the Native American community. Uh, this website has everything from how to celebrate the holidays in culturally appropriate ways to like there's a hotline you can call if you're forced to have dinner with your racist uncle. Um, there's a... <laughs> I got, I got that one plugged into my phone. So there's a list of children's, but not for this Thanksgiving, Michael. There's a list of children's uh, books that celebrate Native Americans and indigenous mighty girls. So this is a phenomenal resource that I found. Um, seriously, look up a racial justice guide to Thanksgiving is what it's called. It is a phenomenal resource. So I'm choosing to use this holiday as a time for gratitude and a time for leaning into learning new things about social justice. So on that site, I found an article that's called, Should We Celebrate Thanksgiving and the Pilgrims? That was the first one that I read. And this article explored how different Native Americans and Native American tribes view Thanksgiving. Some celebrate it, some consider it a day of mourning. But I found this particular excerpt to be interesting. It said, in addition to resenting misinformation about Thanksgiving, some indigenous peoples don't recognize it because they give thanks year round. During Thanksgiving 2008, Bobby Webster of the Oneida Nation told the Wisconsin State Journal that the Oneida have 
13 different ceremonies of thanksgiving throughout the year. And Thundercloud of the Ho-Chunk Nation told the journal that her people also give thanks continually. So a single day of the year for Thanksgiving clashes with Ho-Chunk tradition. We're a very spiritual people who are always giving thanks, she explained. The concept of setting aside one day for giving thanks doesn't fit. We think of every day as Thanksgiving. I was really inspired by this. I'd like to think that I treat every day like Thanksgiving, but I'm not there yet. Some days are hard. Some days it's harder to remember that God, spirit, love is everywhere present and that all is well. Days like today. When I woke up to discover that on this transgender day of remembrance, there was yet another mass shooting in an LGBTQ club. Our hearts are with you, Colorado, and our beautiful communities there. As you mourn, again, it's hard. It's hard sometimes to remember that God, that love, is in it. I really appreciated the mantra that Reverend Shannon gave us last week. She said, I trust that love is at work in this too. Notice that she didn't just say love is in this. You know, for just about everything, if I spend long enough in it, and sometimes it can take a while, but for just about everything, I can come to a place of realizing that love is in it. And that if I can't find the love in it, then that spirit's way of calling me to be the love in it. But that's not what Reverend Shannon said, is it? She said, I trust that love is in this too, because trusting is a whole other ball game. When you say, I trust that love is in this too, you suddenly have something to work with. You can ask yourself, do I trust that love is in this? What do my feelings say about that? What does my experience say about that? You can ask yourself, where can I see love in this? If I can't see love in this, is love still there? Spoiler alert, it is. If I can't yet see the love in this, am I willing to consider that maybe I might be the love in this? This kind of self-reflection is hugely healing. It helps our brains to build structures, to recognize the good in life. It helps our hearts to heal from old hurts. It helps us to truly let go and let God, let the spirit of love have its way in our lives. I find that it's a heck of a lot easier to be in gratitude and wonder when I'm in trust. This week, I got to spend some time with our beautiful Practitioner 2 students, and we were talking about this idea of being non-resistant to life. Non-resistant to life. What does that mean? It means that at some level, and as we progress on this spiritual path, we get it at more and more levels, but at some level, you know and trust that life has got you. That love is everywhere present. That infinite spirit not only knows your name, but looked at this world and thought it needed a you. This is non-resistance to life. Being non-resistance means that we accept it all. The good, the bad, and the ugly in ourselves and each other. The great Pema Chodron said, you build inner strength through embracing the totality of your experience both the delightful parts and the difficult parts. Embracing the totality of your experience is one definition of having loving kindness for yourself. I find that embracing the totality of my experience can be an interesting exercise. (laughs) If your life is in disarray, if you're hurting, if you're afraid, if you're in pain, you may not have an innate desire to embrace these things. We often want to hold them back, push them away, find comfort in something. I read this week that our brains are extremely efficient at building structures and neuropathways from negative experiences, but are really bad at creating those same structures 
out of positive experiences. This means that we have to pay attention to the good in order for our brains to recognize it and then to build the neuropathways to see it again. Pay attention beyond grateful all the way to wonder. To me, embracing the totality of my experience means to be non-resistant to the hard things, but it also means that I have to pay just as much, if not more, attention to the good things, the things that open my heart, the things that bring a sense of wonder. This is what helps our brains build the, that natural feedback loop where we notice the good, we experience the good, we expand the good, we be the good. Then we can notice more good. But it takes work, it takes attention. The Chinese philosopher Shang Zhu, who lived in the fourth century BC, wrote, Mysteriously, wonderfully, I bid farewell to what goes. I greet what comes, for what comes cannot be denied, and what goes cannot be detained. This is embracing the mystery of life, being non-resistant, being in a state of wonder. I've been thinking a lot about the things I'm grateful for lately. As we approach this holiday season, what are you grateful for? Are you making time to sit with that gratitude? Let it work wonders in your heart and in your mind. I have a lot to be grateful for. My beautiful family, this incredible community, this teaching that has quite literally changed my life in every way. In the 23 years that I have been studying this teaching, this community has given me so much. You have given me so much. I met my wonderful husband in this community 20 years ago. We've raised our four beautiful children in this community. It's a very different way to be raised when you're raised in a place that sees you as love and as enough. In taking all of the classes and learning how to apply these principles in my life, I've healed my finances. I've eased my emotional triggers. I've grown into unconditional love and acceptance in ways that I never could have predicted or even understood 23 years ago. This community has given me so many things to think about and people to talk about those things with. More humans to love and a greater capacity for that love. I am so grateful for you. I tell you this because I want you to know on a very real level how grateful I am. Whether I've known you like Reverend Sally for 23 years or whether we are just meeting today, you are the light of my world. Your presence here, your willingness to dive in with me and dive into these things of spirit, it means everything, everything. I hope, I just have to say, that you're prayerfully considering all of the things that this community and this teaching, that Reverend Shannon and Brian, our beautiful staff, our staff of practitioners, our board of trustees, all of the things that they do with all of their hearts to bring this community together, how blessed you are, and I hope you're considering these things as you make your pledge for next year. We're in the middle of our pledge drive. I wrote, gratitude is a feeling, but we do gratitude with our actions. And we can do that with our pledges. One of the things that I've learned on this 23-year journey is that gratitude actually isn't just a feeling. It's an energy field. So stick with me here. We're going to do some science. I always hate talking about science when there's a physicist in the room, John Dewey. <laughs> I, th I think I've got it right. I looked up what is an energy field. We talk about energy all the time. I looked up what is an energy field, and I got this. It comes down to uh, electromagnetic fi magnetic fields. So an electric field is a vector field surrounding an electric charge that exerts force on other charges. That's an electric field. 
A magnetic field is a vector field that describes the magnetic influence of electrical currents in magnetized materials. We can all relate to that. So an electromagnetic field is a physical field produced by electrically charged objects. A physical field produced by electrically charged objects. This is exactly how I experience gratitude. It's an emotional field that is produced by charged feelings. And just like how a magnetic field can attract or repel certain materials, right? And just like how charged ions can attract or repel other ions or electrons, our emotional field can attract or repel certain life experiences. When we would hold on to past hurts, we create an energy field that repels growth. It repels joy. It repels healing itself. Next week, we're going to do... Ooh, hello. Next week, we're going to do a deep dive into this beautiful little book called How We Heal by Alexandra L. We have some available in our bookstore and in our online bookstore if you want to pick one up before we talk about this book next week. But in it, she says, if you don't forgive yourself or let go of old narratives... Healing will be hard to come by. Holding yourself hostage and hating yourself for your past mistakes will not support your longing to heal or create the ease in your life that you want. Amen. I've learned that forgiveness leads to gratitude. Sometimes it's a deep and profound gratitude that the situation happened and for all the lessons learned and all the life experienced, right? Sometimes it's simply gratitude that that person or that situation is no longer in my orbit, right? <laughs> okay, a lot of times, Jen said. But if I can sit in the forgiveness long enough and truly generate that energy field of gratitude, then I can feel things begin to shift. And when I can look back on the perspective of long years... Those small shifts have changed everything. The best example of this that I can give you is in the evolution of my thoughts and feelings around my wee lad, Alex. When Alex was a one-year-old, we learned that he has Duchenne muscular dystrophy. This was a truly devastating diagnosis. I literally don't remember the first week after we got that diagnosis. Um, it took me months to kind of come out of the shock. And it has taken me years to come to terms with the grief journey that I have been on. But there was one moment when everything changed for me. And this happened a couple of years ago. After years of living in pain and fear around his diagnosis, after years of wondering, why him? Why us? Why me? Why did this happen? What will happen if? How will I be if, what if, what if, what if? After years of being in that, slowly, I started to come to terms with the idea that this wee little man who I love so much was here to teach me. Slowly, I was coming to terms with this idea that love was in this too. Oh, so slowly. I was coming to terms with the idea that the facts of our lives paled in comparison to the infinite love that held us. Slowly, I was coming to terms with the idea that embracing the totality of this little man's experience was a blessing to me. But then suddenly, one morning in prayer, I had a new thought. Out of the blue, a voice said, but what if I am here to be a blessing to him? I don't know why, but this small shift in perspective opened an entire avenue of healing in me. Do you see the difference between this experience is here to bless me in some way and I am here to bless this experience? 
It's a huge difference. When you say, uh, uh, this experience is here to bless me, you're being a passive recipient of something that is happening to you. When you say, I have been put here to bless this experience, you are at choice, you are in your power, and you get to be the hands and the feet and the activity of the divine in that. It is an incredibly powerful place to be. <laughs> in this moment, I'd like to invite you to think about something that you might be facing. Maybe it's in a relationship. Maybe it's in your finances or your career. Maybe it's in your body. Maybe it's in a situation that feels completely out of your control. I invite you to hold that situation in your mind. Gently. And if you're willing, say out loud, I am here to be a blessing. I am here to bless this experience. One more time. I'm here to be a blessing. Notice how the tension in your body eases. Notice how the armor around your heart just kind of starts to lower, melt away. Notice how your brilliant brain begins to ask the best question of how. How? How can I be a blessing here? And the universe always says, yes. So when your beautiful, brilliant brain starts to say, how can I be a blessing here? Then suddenly you start to see avenues for how you can show up as God, you can show up as love, you can show up as the divine in every situation, all of it. You were put on this planet at this time in your life with your family, your life situation, your talents, your grief, all of it. You were put here to show up to show up as the divine, to show up as love, as wisdom, as laughter and joy, as freedom, as peace, tranquility. As the great 14th century mystic Julianne of Norwich reminded us, this is one of my favorite things of all time. She said, all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. For there is a force of love moving through the universe that holds us fast and will never let us go. I believe that not only is there this force of love in the universe that won't let us go, but I believe that we're put here on this planet to be that force for each other. I was raised to believe that we are God's hands and feet and that the way that spirit moves through this planet is by moving through us, by moving us. I know that there is a lot in the field right now, loves. I know that our beloveds in Colorado are mourning again. I know that a lot of us are facing some family situations that are bringing us to our knees. But you know what I love about things that bring me to my knees? It offers me an opportunity to surrender. It offers me an opportunity to say, I don't have to do this alone because there are many, 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 many God's hands here. And as we show up as that love, as we show up as that divinity in our experience, nobody can do it in your life but you. I want to say, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for your courage. I'm grateful for your willingness. I'm grateful that you said yes to this life now. That you showed up to bless my life. I can now look my little eight-year-old in the eyes and say that 
with utter sincerity, right? What challenge do you need to look at? And say with utter sincerity, I'm going to be love for you here. I just really invite you as we go into these holidays, these holy days, with all that we are about and all of the busyness, I just want to invite you to remember you are the light of the world and you are bringing that into every situation, every relationship, everywhere you go. Watch that light expand. Watch that light grow as we bless each other. I'm grateful for you. Hi, friends. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that this message supported you. We are a nonprofit, and we do all of this based solely on the gifts that you give. No amount is too small or too large. You can text to give. You can go online and check out our website. We're doing so much. You can give that way. Thank you so much for being here, for being a part of this community, and for supporting this message of bringing more light, more love, and spirit-led social action out into the world. Thank you. You're loved. So loved.